In a previous video, I was talking about a hands-free kit that was Bluetooth that looked a hell of a lot like a car phone kit. Now that was really cool, but at the same time I also said that most hands-free kits for mobile cellular telephones didn't really show up until mm, the late 80s, didn't really become popular until the 90s. I have been optimistic that the early brick phones could have had a hands-free kit, mainly because I've never seen any proof that such a device ever existed. Well, I, I love to be proven wrong in stuff like this, and by chance, something showed up not in North America, but the United Kingdom, and by chance, I had this feeling I knew exactly what phone it was going to be for. Yes, indeed, this is a brick phone. This is a Dynatac model 8000. I believe it's been rebranded or OEM'd by Pulsar and then rebranded by Cantel, who turned into Rogers Communications up here in Canada many years later. Now, this is not necessarily the kind of thing you'd expect to find a car kit for, and yet I have seen existing examples of saying, ooh, here's a car kit for it. What did those car kits look like? Well, I have this thing right here. Um, what you would do is you take your battery off, and this here is just a battery eliminator with a locking cradle hub on it, so that would go on, and then you would just plug this into your cigarette lighter, this would clip in somewhere, and then whenever you were driving, because back then it was still somewhat legal to talk while you were on the phone and driving, um, you could just kind of grab the phone, hit the send button, and answer the call as you could. But it's not a car kit. This is just a battery eliminator. Now, with this Pulsar here, you have an additional barrel jack and LED that's living there, and you have this extra cable. And what this lets you do is that the battery can stay in place. You would plug this in here, and now not only can you use your phone, but you can trickle charge it while you're in the car. So you can just use it at any time you want, and you'd still be actively charging it. This is also not the car kit I'm expecting. I'm expecting something far more impressive from Mo Motorola. So you may have already seen it when I took the phone's battery off. There is a group of connectors up here. I have, for the longest time, assumed that that was some sort of factory programming jig. And that's all it was for. I've never found like a data kit that attached to that, an accessory kit that attached to that. You just have your battery contacts that are living down there. Well, when this item showed up, it arrived in a beautiful little box, and I'm going to unbox that for you now. The packaging that the seller used on this thing is so beautiful, I was very careful to repack it again using all the material I received. This is probably one of the greatest international shipments I have ever seen. Anyways, nice fragile box, which as I open up, is already cram full of packing material here. So let's move that out of the way as I unbox this. So the first thing wrapped in paper was this cable here. It has a Molex plug on one side and one of these weird automotive plugs on the other. It's power of some sort. I have this here, which is your microphone, which would be for the hands-free kit. So it allows your Dynatac to be on hands-free now. That's kind of cool. And it also came with a set of fuses. Uh, this one's actually dirty, so I'm pretty certain this kit here has been used at some point, but it's so well maintained, it's really nice. So I will just drop that on the floor. Next thing I have here, wrapped in bubble wrap, is a speaker. Now, this speaker here has a 25 millimeter jack living right up on the top here, and that's where you would plug your microphone in. On the other side of it, we have yet another Molex connector. So now we have two devices here, which plug in through the Molex. I would assume there would be a Motorola logo that would be right here on the front of the speaker, but I feel sticker residue, so it must have fallen off. It has this bolt-on bracket here, which allows you to attach it to just about anywhere. So that's really nice. You can put that into your Cadillac somewhere. And I have this, which is in an anti-static bag. Spared no expense, did you? And now this is this is interesting. So here's the control box. We know it's the control box because now we can say, well, there's one Molex connection there. There's another Molex connection for the speakers here. Um, it's got a giant heat sink on it. I see two deletes right here. One of them that says antenna. So I think at one point this was supposed to be 
some other component that had an antenna or like a booster or something in there. Either way, it's nice, it's small, um, it's discreet, and so far it uses different connectors for each one, and every single connector so far seems to be something that you can still get. So that's kind of neat. So I'll put that there. Wrapped in paper, we have yet another wiring harness, and yet another one that uses Molex connectors. So these ones plugs into, I believe the brown connector here. Yes, it goes into the brown connector. And so that extends off to something else. I know what that is already. So I will put that off to the side. And the last thing in here. Ah, so here's the wiring harness. Okay, so for this here, we have two more connectors. So one would plug in Oh, I see. Is that actually... They are the exact same connector, but different color codes. But this one here has two connectors molded into it, so you can actually plug it in, and then the other one plugs in directly above it, so you can't make the mistake I did and plug the wrong one in. Or at least you can, but you would know very quickly, because physically, like, I'm assuming this is power up here, it wouldn't work. Um, this has never been used. So the easiest way to know if these car kits have ever been used is when you look at the wiring terminations. Oh, wait, I'm a liar. I see tape residue, but they're very clean. So they're all, they're all pretty much the exact same length. The strips, wires on the end are all the exact same length and they're tinned. But what do we got here? So we have ground, battery, ignition, and auxiliary. The ignition here is just simply this would then have power all the time, but it sits in a sleep mode until the ignition is turned on with the green wire. And then at that point there, the whole car kit would power itself up. Um, I have that there, which I think plugs into there. E I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, nope. Yeah, that plugs into there. And I guess that provides the speaker. And then the other side here is this RJ45 connector. This I recognize from other car phones and bag phones. So, this is a Motorola handset, and this would just click in, and then this would hide somewhere. Um, from what I've been told, these later car phone sets, um, they may not be compatible with this. I think this is requesting a, a very specific Dynatac 6000 handset with a vacuum fluorescent display, because battery is not really a problem here, and it has an RJ45 connector, which on its own means that there's not a lot of handsets that are compatible with this, and unfortunately it's missing. So we have a speaker, we have a control box, we have cabling, a microphone. Where's the rest of it? Ah, okay, so here we go. That's everything out of that box. The first item, which again is wrapped in bubble wrap. Man, this is all really well done. Uh, there we go. Is an otherwise nondescript black plastic box. On the underside here, I have an antenna connector. We're missing the antenna cable and a little pass-through glass antenna, but okay, that's fairly straightforward and easy to find. And we have this Molex connector here which I'm willing to bet you, yes, so that plugs in there and that connects it off to the control box. On the top here, I have a white button and a Chicago lock. So what are you supposed to do with this? That just swings open like that. And now you take your Dynatac, you take the battery off of the Dynatac you then slide the phone into tracks, which then drops in and closes. And then you can lock the phone inside the carrier. So now you're using those pinned contacts. I don't know if I can really get these on the camera. There's, those, there's a group of um, 12 contacts which are now mating up with those contacts that were on the back of the Dynatac that I couldn't figure out what they do. So that now means this phone has been completely broken out to this box 
which is also attached to this handset. So this here can now live, for example, under the seat, or it can live in the glove box, or it can live under one of the seats, or in the trunk, or like, the, the, the list goes on. And because it's lockable, you could just put that in there and leave it, and no one's gonna steal the phone. And if you still want a mobile phone, you just take it out of the cradle box, pop the battery in, and walk away. And this entire car kit remains in the vehicle. You just have to bring the phone back and drop it back in. And it's not locked to or paired to the phone. So any other Dynatac can be dropped into this thing and it just works. And the last thing here is in this, and if I pull that out, well, remember this cable here? That plugs into there, which then plugs into the box, and this here. <laughs> so remember, you have to take the battery off to use it in the, in the cradle. The battery can then go, and it locks into here, and this is a battery charger. So then this can be put somewhere so you can charge the battery as long as you're plugged into the car kit. And there's a little loop right here in the event that you're using the wired antenna on this kit so you can store your antenna with the battery. So when you take the phone out, well, here, let's put this all together and let's imagine here for a minute. So when, let's say, you park your Porsche, you go over, you take your phone, you take it out, sitting next to the radio box, you have your phone, which or your battery kit, which is charging, and apparently, there we go. And then I'll just simply pop that on, screw on my antenna, hit the power button, and then I can walk away from my Porsche. And there we go. Now with all this fluff here, specifically for the Dynatac, it made me think, because the actual Dynatac brick in this style was revised a number of times until I think it was dis discontinued in like 1993, you could still get one of these new. Of course, obviously, those newer ones are going to be significantly smaller. This one here, as you can see by order of magnitude, is about 30% smaller. It uses the exact same batteries, and if I remove this battery, it has those contacts underneath. So does this just slot in here as well? Yes, it does. So what that then tells me is it doesn't matter if you have one of the original brick phones or one of the later ones from the 90s, they'll both work with this car kit. Uh, now, unlike the, with my Cartel Bluetooth handset, uh, I'm not going to try and install this in my vehicle. I specifically need to get myself another vehicle to do this, and I am not going to buy another vehicle just to install a phone. But I do hope that this little show and tell here of something I never even thought existed, um, a car kit for a Dynatac um, was very informative. And uh, if, you ha if you've ever owned one of these, I'd love to hear about it. But until next time, have a good one.